Hello, AP Physics C students. We're going to start today with problem number nine. So go ahead and read that to yourself a little bit and get started on part A, and then come back to the video when you've done it. Okay, so hopefully you recognize this is quite similar to a problem we had done in our notes just the other day where we had the conducting object falling in a uniform magnetic field. The difference is now it's on an inclined plane. So, you know, we're going to apply the same general ideas. I give you two different views of it. So we have this sort of three-quarter perspective view and the side view. And our first job is to figure out the direction of the current in the rod. So why is it going to need a current in a rod? Well, we've got a moving conductor inside a magnetic field. And so first thing we want to do is maybe sketch the magnetic field, which it says is pointing straight up. And so in this picture, it's like this. In this picture, it's like this. I put it off to the side because eventually we're going to do a three-by diagram, and I don't want to mix and match and confuse the issue. All right, so a bunch of ways you can think about it. Um, if you, again, isolate our individual proton, we see that the all the protons in the rod are moving down the incline. So the velocity of all these protons is this way, and they're inside a magnetic field. And so if you do your right-hand rule with the chart is moving down the incline, and then it's a little bit awkward here, uh, trying to curl your fingers to the top of the page. Remember, you can turn the page any way you want to. You should see that the charges are, have a magnetic force forcing them into the page. And so the current is going to point that way. The charges are going to be forced away from you. On this picture, again, the charges, all the charges in the bar are moving down the incline. And then the magnetic field to the top, you know, sort of out of the page in some way or you know, up in that regard. And so the protons can be forced to this end. They can come out of this circuit, go back around this way. And so the charges are going to flow generally in this direction. Alternatively, of course, you can do this in terms of Lenz's law, where the magnetic field is pointing up, and then the bar moves over here. So there's more magnetic field pointing up, and the universe doesn't like that. So it tries to take field away by creating, inducing the magnetic field pointing down into the page. If you do a right-hand rule shortcut, you'll see that the way that happens is charges flowing around in sort of a clockwise fashion to create a, an induced magnetic field pointing into the page to remove the extra field pointing out of the page or up, however you want to think about it. Either way, we should be getting a current pointing away from us here or this way in the bar. Hopefully you can see that's the same thing in these different perspective views. Okay, so now it's time to do a free body diagram of the rod. And so I want you to pause the video and go ahead and do that. Notice we're only doing it on the side view. It'd be way too complicated to do it on here. So we're just doing it on this picture right here. Pause the video, come back when you've done, uh, and look to see what I did. Okay, so hopefully, of course, you started with the weight pointing straight down, and always pointing straight down. Normal force, of course, pointing perpendicular to the incline. I hope you didn't forget either of those because you know, we always follow a routine. We always do the exact same thing in the same order so we don't forget about things just because those forces may not maybe they don't have an impact, we still draw it on the picture. So weight straight down, normal force up to the left. Now you may be tempted, of course, to break weight into its components. But remember, according to the rules for the AP exam, we're not going to do that. So if you have drawn those components, please take a moment and erase those components. We don't want that on our free body diagram. While it may be useful for us, we have to draw a separate free body diagram to do that, and we'll do that a little bit later. But of course, you should recognize there is another force going on here. Now that we have a wire with current sitting inside the magnetic field, it will experience, of course, a magnetic force. So if you haven't done it yet, do your right-hand rule, figure out the direction of the magnetic force on the movable conductor. OK, so you got to be careful with this, right? The charges are moving into the page. The field is to the top of the page. Which right-hand rule is this? Is this the point, the grab, or the shortcut? This is the point. Anytime we're doing magnetic force, we're pointing first. So our charges, our fingers point into the page. Magnetic field to the top of the page. And don't worry about the incline. You have to do this very strictly. Charges are into the page. Field to the top of the page. Our magnetic force is directly to the right. Yeah, it's directly to the right. If you have it up the incline, that's not correct. Try it again. Charges in, moving into the page, fields to the top of the page. The magnetic force is to the right. Maybe it's not where you wanted it to be, but that's what it is. And once again, this should be the entire free body diagram. Don't change anything about it. All right, now we are going to have to resolve these forces into components to see what happens next. So if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and redraw your free body diagram, maybe off to the side somewhere, and resolve forces into components that are appropriate. So how do we decide what forces to, to resolve into components? Well, the rod is moving down the incline. It's accelerating down the incline. The normal force has nothing to do with that motion. So of course, weight has to be resolved into its components. Components down the incline, components into the incline. And it's traditional to scribble out the original force, which I've drawn here very crudely. And of course, we know mg sine theta points down the incline. mg cosine theta points into the incline. You don't have to play your, your fine theta. We know this happens every single time. But look at this. 
The magnetic force also needs to be resolved into components, right? It's going to have components up the incline and a component into the incline. And let me scribble out the original force. This is important because we only care about forces up and down the incline, and the magnetic force does have a component that opposes the motion. Now here we do have to play fine theta, although it's really not a very difficult fine theta, right? If we sort of extend this here, there's a horizontal, here's the angle of the incline, which is exactly the same as the angle of the incline there. So it's not a very difficult fine theta, so there's theta. And if you haven't yet, take a moment and try to figure out which trig function goes with which component. All right, it should be difficult to see that this is the adjacent side, so here's f sub m cosine theta, here's the opposite side, here's f sub m sine theta. So this is what this looks like. More complicated than we're used to, but there it is. All right, so now we're going to determine the rod's terminal speed. So I've just recreated the three by diagram here so you can see it. Pause the video, try it on your own, come back to see how I solve it. Okay, so again, I started the video by reminding you this looks an awful lot like what we've done before with the rod falling in the magnetic field, and we want to find the terminal speed. We should, of course, be starting with sigma f equals ma. So here we have mg sine theta minus f sub m cosine theta equals ma. The magnetic force is the force on a moving wire with current, so it's ILB sine theta, where theta equals 90 degrees. Now be careful, this is not the angle of the incline at all, right? This is the angle between the direction of the motion of the charges and the magnetic field, which happens to be 90 degrees. The charge moving into the page, the magnetic field is at the top of the page, that's 90 degrees between them. That's this angle here, not the angle of the incline. So sine theta goes away to 1, and so here's mg sine theta minus force, magnetic force, which is ILB, and this cosine theta is still there from the components of the magnetic force. Okay, now the current is using Ohm's law, EMF over R. The EMF is the EMF of the, of the voltage of the battery. Excuse me, that's the, that's the uh, motional EMF, I apologize, the motional EMF. And the rod is moving, so motional EMF equals BLV. So we put that in here for the current. That's BLV over R. We start collecting some terms. That's B squared, that's L squared. B over R. We still have this cosine theta. Remember, we're finding terminal speed. We're not going to be solving this. We don't have to write the differential. You certainly could write this as mg VDT if you'd like to, but we're not doing that in this problem. We're just finding the terminal speed of VT A equals 0, or VDT equals 0. So let's set this equal to 0. Move this over to this side. Really just set these two equal to each other. We're solving for VT. So we should be getting expression looks like this mgr tangent of theta over b squared l squared. And we put all the numbers in. We should be getting 2.7 meters per second. So. If at any point in this you got stuck, pause the video, follow the logic, recreate it on your own, try it on your own, come back here. When you get to this point, don't just write down the answer, right? Put the numbers in, make sure you can get that. You should be getting 2.7 meters per second. Okay, now it's time to sketch some graphs here. Notice we're not solving this completely, but we should recognize the general behavior of this. So pause the video, sketch your graphs, label some important points on the graphs, and come back to see how I do it. All right, for the speed versus time, we know this is our usual um, growth graph here that we've seen before. We know it's going to asymptotically approach that terminal speed, which is 2.7 meters per second. It starts from rest, and so here's our general growth graph here, asymptotically approaching 2.7 meters per second. What well, for the acceleration? Well, at the moment you let go of it, there is no current yet because it hasn't really gone anywhere yet, so it hasn't induced an EMF yet, and so there's no current, so there's no magnetic force on it, and so it's really just our usual inclined plane and so when time equals zero, A just equals G sine theta, and you put the numbers in, that's 2.5 meters per second squared. That's where it's going to start. It's going to start at time equals zero, 2.5 meters per second squared. And then what happens? Well, as it moves faster and faster, the EMF gets larger and larger, the current gets larger and larger, the magnetic force gets larger and larger, and so it's opposing the motion more and more. And just like our object falling in a resistive fluid force or something like that, the acceleration is going to decrease. It's going to asymptotically approach zero. So again, this problem is very much like our old problems we had done with air resistance.